Okay, welcome back. Now, last lesson we talked about the individual mallet rotation with the inside mallets. <clears throat> now we're going to do it with the outside mallets. We're going to approach it in a very similar manner. I want you to gently hold on to the mallet head with your left hand with the, of the inside mallet. Now, think of this twisting the outside mallet up and then back down. Nice and slow. Again, you're going to feel the yarn of the inside mallet rotate between your fingers. You can also think, think of this as an axis point, rotation point. You know how the world is on an axis, ro rotates around it? Well, that's what's happening here. This mallet shaft actually ends up being the axis point for this mallet, and then vice versa, the other way around. The outside mallet is the axis point for the inside mallet. So, take some time now and develop the rotation of the outside mallet. Now that we have both covered, we can sit there and combine very slowly, one hand at a time. On page 52, we have a couple exercises that break down nice and slow, one hand at a time, concentrating on the inside and the outside. It's very important not only to think about what the the moving mallet, the mallet that you're playing, what that is doing, but also the non-playing mallet within your hand. Remember we talked about we don't want teeter-totter effect, we don't want that mallet to accidentally play. Keep in mind also there's no vertical motion going on here. It's all this rotation. I'm not lifting up my arm in order to play or bending at the wrist like we were doing with the double stop stroke. This is a total rotation, no vertical motion. Okay, so take the time, take it nice and slow. You have four mallets to deal with, so experiment with different combinations, but really think about that non-playing mallet being under control. Okay, have fun with it, and we'll see you at the next lesson where we're going to expand on this concept.